Luxury cars and car guys usually don't mix too well together, but that's only because us car guys don't know what they truly hide under the hood. But once we figure it out, we fall in love. I mean, look at the love that the GS300, the LS400, the G35, all those cars get nowadays. But there are so many more. And today, I am here to talk to you about one of the most slept on luxury cars in the car community today. I am Mark Roden, and this is the deep dive on the Infiniti M45. In order to tell the whole story on the Infiniti M cars, we need to start with the wonderful Nissan Leopard, because the M line Infinities were honestly just rebadged versions of these cars, and the first ever Leopard would be brought onto the scene in 1980 and went by the chassis code F30. And it was built to be a direct contender to the incredibly popular Toyota Chaser. Now, as history shows, this did not bode well for Nissan since the Chaser was an incredibly popular option among the car world. So naturally, sales were a little bit lower than the competition at first. But Nissan was smart. Nissan knew what was best for them. And for one of the only times in Japanese car history, they gave us Americans the cool car. Suddenly. Is sitting in the lap of luxury in the new Infiniti M30 convertible. The Infiniti M30 got launched in the United States in 1990 and was quite literally exactly the same as the second generation of the Nissan Leopard that was launched four years earlier in 1986. As a matter of fact, the only difference between the JDM Leopard and the USDM M30 was the dashboard was from an R31 Skyline in order to fit it for left hand drive. That's pretty crazy. Almost as crazy as over 80% of my viewers not being subscribed. Do your boy a solid, hit that subscribe button. But the Infiniti M30 was essentially used as a way for Infiniti to sell more cars and make a bit more cheddar because when Infiniti launched, they were not as successful as their competition Acura and Lexus. So alongside the Q45 and the G20, they wanted to give us another option in order to hopefully boost sales. And well, it actually kind of worked. The Q45 and the G20 sales remained the same, but now they had another car bringing in around 10,000 sales per year too. So Infiniti was happy and so were the customers because we didn't really have any sport luxury vehicles from Japan yet in America. Sure, we had the BMWs and the Audis, but we didn't have any from the land of Japan. And this, would kind of be an industry first but now for us gearheads and what we actually care about the engine well i'm happy and also not happy to inform you that it came with a very watered down version of nissan's vr30 that they were putting in the 300 zx's at the time that my friends was a three liter v6 but this time instead of being dual overhead cams it was only a single overhead cam and that made it only make 161 horsepower which sure does sound pretty bad but remember this car was a luxury car and they did not miss on the luxury the car came standard with an airbag anti-lock brakes leather upholstery anti-theft security system power freaking everything and a damn cell phone in the car there was so much technology to this car <laughs> That's what I've been waiting for. That's what it's all about. When the second generation Nissan Leopard came along, the states got the car, but it was not a part of the M line anymore. Instead, it was now called the Infiniti J30. Don't worry though, we're still going to talk about it here because let's face it, it's the next generation M car. It also came with a 3 liter V6, but this time it was dual overhead cams, which helped it reach a very nice 200 horsepower, which was awesome. And people were happy with that. But sadly, the looks were a bit strange it had almost like a maxima style front end but the rear end looked like something like a british car company would make back in the 60s and it didn't really flow too well nowadays i really like it personally but back when it was launched it was not the most successful car out there people just did not think this was a big enough improvement from the m30 to be honest and they didn't like the way they went with styling so they didn't buy it which sucks a lot for us because that means there's really not that many people who even know that these cars exist when they absolutely should they only sold a massive low 8,000 units in Japan in its whole lifespan, which is sad because the tech was even better now. It had heated seats, lumbar support for the driver's seat, and a self-dimming rear view mirror. And with the added bonus of the extra horsepower, I'd say the car was pretty cool.
The next version of the Nissan Leopard would not be available in the United States, and to be honest with you, I don't really care. The car was cool, but instead we got a rebadged version of the Nissan Sephiro, which we called the Infinity i30, and I think it's a bit cooler than the Leopard, to be honest. After the Infinity i30 came and went, we finally saw another iteration of the M-Line Infinity cars, and this time, they were here to stay. The technically second generation, I know it's confusing, Infiniti M car would come in 2002, and this time it was based off of the Nissan Gloria platform, which is another banger car that we will talk about in a different video. But the M45 was, well, amazing. It came with a monster of an engine called the VK45DE, which was a 4.5 liter V8 that they, that they had put in the Q45 before, and it managed to make a 340 horsepower going directly to the rear wheels. And before you ask, yes, this car was kind of heavy at right around the 3,800 pound, but to be honest with you, that's not even that bad for a luxury car. For example, the 350Z was built around the same time and had 50 horsepower less than that, but only weighed 100 pounds less. And the 350Z only had two seats and it didn't have the best technology in it. This car, however, was a luxury sedan with top of the line tech in it. It was a hit or well, it should have been a hit. Oh God, no God, please no, no, no. No! This generation of the M line was actually the most unsuccessful generation to date, selling only a combined total of 8,000 cars in its three year lifespan. So the next generation had some big shoes to fill. And well, lucky for Infinity, that generation had some LeBron James sized feet. It would be launched in 2005 and was still being called the M45. It came with the same motor too, with just a little bit less horsepower at 325 in order to make the car more reliable because when that engine first launched, it it was kind of the complete opposite of reliable. However, this time they were also offered with an incredibly reliable VQ35DE or VQ35HR in later years, which in case you don't know, it's the same motor found in the 350Z or the G35. That, my friends, is a 3.5 liter V6 and it managed to make an impressive 306 horsepower. And paired with the fact that they massively changed the looks to make the car look a lot more like the G35, people finally started showing some love to the M45. It sold 25,000 models in 2005 alone, and then it kept that same number the next two years, which is more than triple the amount that they sold during the whole runtime of the last generation. I get the clock radio, he cannot afford. Great success. And don't worry, they made the car even more modern. After all, this is a luxury car, and this one did not skip on the luxury. It came with a touchscreen, iPhone integration system, a music hard drive, and much, much more. And with then, when we all thought they couldn't get any better, those crazy boys did it again. The fourth and final generation as of right now in 2022 would come out in 2010 and would stay around for a very long nine years. This time though, they really cared about it. The rest of the world showed Infinity how much they liked the M45 with the last generation and this time they did not want to mess it up. It was offered with a ridiculous amount of motors, all of which are very good. You got the M25, which was offered with a 2.5 liter V6 and it only made 218 horsepower and was essentially the worst model you can buy. Then they had the M37, which was offered with the same motor found in the 370Z of the time, a 3.7 liter V6 that made 330 horsepower and was a good middle ground. Then you had the M35H, which was a hybrid version of the Nissan 350Z motor that we talked about earlier, and that electric motor helped push the car up to 350 horsepower but now it was also pretty good on gas. And finally was the big boy, the M56, which was, well, amazing. It was a 5.6 liter V8 that made a massive 420 horsepower, haha, <laughs> nice. And even though this was a much more expensive option, it was eaten up by the customers. It had 14,000 sales in 2010 alone and was really liked by the critics for being pretty much just a cheaper option for something like a Mercedes or BMW. And for once in my life, I think I actually agree with the critics here. The Infinity M line of cars was something a bit different. Sure, it may have not just been some random cash grab attempt at first from Infinity to just sell more cars, 
but over time i think it really shows that they started to care for this new luxury car like it's their freaking baby and they just continue to make it better and better which is surprising to say the least since most car companies like to make their cars worse for some reason so to infinity and nissan alike i know us car guys are kind of failing you in the in hyping up your hard work but just know that we do appreciate it they may not be big names in the community like the supra or the gtr but to those who do know about them we would hate to see you stop making them